Mic check one two. Mic check one two. Mic check one two. It's Tuesday indeed, which means I say that line. I say that line. That's my line up. Yeah, that's my line up. So it's Tuesday, which means it's Tuesday, which means it's the medical show. And myself, Stanje. And myself, Doctor. Welcome back. Happy New Year. Welcome back. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, Doc. Why can't I hear myself? I can't hear myself either. Hello, can anybody hear me? Hello. Live to the world. I think you can turn it again. I think you can turn it again. Can you hear yourself, Doc? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can I get one of those mics? Yeah. That's right, Sarah. Was that the long one? Nope. <laughs> right, one, two. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, okay. back. It's Tuesday, back. Doc. What does it's that mean? Tuesday, Doc. What does that mean? It means that it's a medical show with myself, Doctor Danso, and myself, Stanley, and myself, Stanley. Wow. How's, how's it been? Wow. It's been a while. It, been? it has been it's indeed. Been a while. It has it been has indeed. Been, yeah, it it has been. Like it has. It, it feels like forever. It does. It does. What's been happening? What's been happening? In How Ghana, was that for you? Vitamin, How was that, for that you? vitamin D. Oh my gosh! I think I lost I about three kilos. Got, I think I lost about really? three kilos. Yeah, that. fresh. Listen, yeah, you fresh. Saw my, you'll be listen, so proud. You'll be so proud. You'll be so proud. Mangoes every morning. Mangoes every morning. At least by the time, look, least, as I open my by the time, look, as I open oh, my eyes. Honestly, the way I was half, sweating look, out there. Honestly, the way I was sweating you know, out there. Honestly, by the time I've even you know, had my breakfast. Honestly, by the time I've even had my breakfast. One liter. By the time I've left the house. One liter. By the time I've left the house. One liter. Yeah, you have to stay. Have to stay. Hey. I thought I was. I thought I was prepared. I thought I was. I thought I was prepared. I was. I was. I was really struggling about the last few days. Yeah. All in all, it was good. Yeah. All in all, it was good. I think I needed that sunshine. I got my dog. I'm cured. You know what? I don't know what cures you. I need something for this cold. It's too much. The way that I'm feeling the cold in my bones. It's too much, dog. It is. It's too much. But it is. We're here, we're alive, we're, we're well. We're alive, we're well. <laughs> Uh, as the, as, as the youngest, there's no way to kind of transport. Isn't there no way to kind of transport the sun from Ghana? I mean, to be honest, but with that sun, there's going to be more dust, and I'm not ready to deal with that dust and heat and everything else. What do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? You're almost complaining, though. You're almost complaining, though. To be honest, it's a lot. You know what it is. You got mosquito. You know what it is. You got mosquito bites. Really? No. Really? Yeah. You know what they? Yeah. You know what they? The AC bro. Yeah, to just drive around with the windows down. Just drive around with the windows down. In a mathematic, so in a mathematic, at one point, honestly, at one point, yeah, it's not. I think AC also dries out my eyes, it goes up my throat, it's going to get balanced with AC, it's balanced with AC. I sound like such a... Yeah, Ghana was good. Yeah, Ghana was good, man. Happy New Year to me. Happy New Year to me. Happy New Year to all of us. And Happy New Year to all of our listeners. This is GA Radio, your link to Africa. And this is the medical show with myself. And this is the medical show with myself. Yeah, I, uh, it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be right. You know, I had lots of different things. You know, I had. I can't ignore. I can't ignore the elephant in the room, which is the virus. So that's what we're discussing today, though. So that's what we're discussing today, though. Yeah, we're talking about coronavirus largely. What it means. What it is. What it means. What it is. And 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 and things yeah. that you can do, and, and things that you can do, something that a lot of people are nervous about the big C. I call it the small C. I call it the small C. Yeah. 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 All right, so if you want to join in the conversation, right, so you want to join give, us, in the conversation, give us a call on 0203 735 8820. That's 0203 735 8820. So again, we'll be discussing coronavirus. We're going to be talking about World Cancer Day and Touching on Cancer. Um, and whether you've been through um, it, you know, but we invite you, as you know, but we invite you as always to call in with any questions, you may, have any questions you may have, any concerns, any ailments, any aches and pains, and one anything. thing I can guarantee, and one thing I can guarantee, you, you, you will leave the show knowing more than you did when you first locked in. We always learn something on the show, we always learn something on the show, and you know, we like to engage with us, spending your questions on Facebook, spending your questions on Facebook, and fire away those questions, and fire away those questions. Somebody said to me, the other day. No, somebody said to me the other day. Tell me. Are you a doctor? Are you a doctor? And I'm like, 
I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, no. No. Yeah, you know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, thanks to the Lord. Oh, thanks to the Lord. Honestly, even when I was in Ghana, I was like, even when I was in Ghana, I was like, oh, don't get that. Don't do this and don't do that. They were like, how do you know all of this? See? 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 Yeah, so coronavirus. Yeah, coronavirus. So much information out there about it already. Um. There's, there's so much media, there's so many different stories, there's a lot of scare stories as well. Yeah. Um, and I thought I'd just break down the facts. So coronavirus is a type of, it's a virus, mm-hmm. um, similar to what we would, similar to a, like a cold virus or a flu virus. Mm-hmm. You know, it gives you very similar symptoms, cough, cold, runny nose, coughing, mm-hmm. um, breathlessness, difficulty in breathing. Um, but I think the main thing I want to, I want to sort of stress about coronavirus is that it is it is dangerous, yes, mm. but mainly for people that are that have a very weakened immune system. So yeah. the very young, the very old, and people with other illnesses that make their immune system lower. So un- unfortunately, there's been a really high death rate. Mm-hmm. But what we do know is that a lot of those people have had what we call comorbidity. So other reasons why they have Mm. Uh, become susceptible to this infection yeah. um, but uh, as we know the, the the World Health Organization are working really closely with China to try and come up with some sort of vaccine mm-hmm. which can take some time because you've got to study how the virus changes and evolves um, but, but, but it's just it's interesting how the precautions are well, it's good that we have such precautionary measures such as masks and things like that to, yeah. s- to stop this transmission Wow. Um, and we know it's it's by tran- droplet transmission, same way that you get cough and cold. So it's so important that you wash your hands mm-hmm. um, and try not to, you know, if you're working in an area, you clean the area thoroughly, making sure it's clean, public places, same as airplanes, things like that, airports. People are wearing face masks to prevent that transmission as well. Wow, wow, wow. But even the symptoms that you just discussed, they sound just like a common cold. So, yeah, I mean, how would exactly. I, co- to be honest, you know, I don't even want to say this, Doc. Um, but I'll say, it. Um, when I was coming back from Ghana, you know, someone decided that because it was cheaper, we should do a transit. Mm. So we ended up doing this transit flight, f- even though they came back on a different day to me because they got it wrong. Oh. So anyway, no comment, no comment. <laughs> uh. um, but anyway, I ended up doing this transit and um, I was actually speaking to people from, you know, I suppose some Asian people from that side of the world. Yeah. And... Um, and we've been seeing it recently where there's a whole lot going on in there. And I couldn't tell you I was kind of, I wouldn't say that I was scared, you know, but I know some people were kind of making, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the memes kind of going around now and stuff like that. But, you know, I have, when I came back from Ghana, I wasn't really well. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, I said to myself, you know, what could it be? What is going on? And, you know, I actually read up with some of the symptoms as well, but it, I would just think it was a cold. This is it. And I think, I think the most important thing is, for you to have had this coronavirus, you have to have been in that vicinity more than likely to have that. So we know that it's the outbreak was in Wuhan. Mm-hmm. So we know that that's where it comes from. So yes, there were a lot of people that you know were very worried because the symptoms were really similar. Mm. But the, the main distinguishing factor is, have you been in contact with somebody that was there or were you there yourself? Mm. Because, wow. as I said, this, it's very difficult to distinguish those symptoms. Wow. I know. Jeez. <laughs> I know, so it's quite it's deadly scary. way to start so, the I mean, um, So, the Doc, show. I mean, it, let's just say, I mean, so even though it came from that part of the world and, you know, let's just say somebody coming from there to here, um, is, you know, so you said it's a virus. Is it like an airborne virus? Or? Yes, so it's transmitted by, by droplets. So if you, for example unfortunate enough to be in a room with me and I cough or sneeze and then you inhale or touch mm-hmm. those droplets if they land on the surface then you would get those get the bug or the wow. virus so do your face masks actually work though so what do they, they do the, to the an ex- actually... they do to an extent so the face masks yeah. basically prevent you giving off any droplets and also inhaling mm. anyone else's droplets as well but wow. to be honest peeps some people have always been wearing face masks for a long periods of time, way before this outbreak. I've seen yeah. people in West End wearing 
Yeah, my, my, you know, my brother went to Tokyo yesterday and um, the mask he's got, I'm, I'm asking himself, whether he's a mask or a gas mask. <laughs> I said, look, man, it's like I have to go there. It was booked from before, so he had to go there on some business and stuff like that, man. But the mask he's wearing is pretty... Hefty. Pretty hefty, man. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you've got to be sure. I think know? it's... it's. I think also, you know, it's just thinking about all those people that are in lockdown. They're not allowed to leave their homes. They can't man, go crazy, anywhere. Yeah. And also the medical professionals. Can you imagine turning up for your shift mm -hmm. and then you just you're stuck you know you turned up for your shift and now you're you're quarantined and the, the one of the doctors unfortunately has passed away the one that was that first discovered um the, the wuhan the coronavirus and was treating it he, yeah, he it's was, yeah it's just it's, it's quite so is it likely doc that we're going to kind of have because we've kind of seen this before in the, in the movies where we've seen this kind of um what's there's a word for it i can't remember what it is um but you know the virus is spreading yeah, everywhere around yeah. the world. Are we going to kind of get this? Uh, I think it's unlikely. I think everybody's working really hard to prevent that. You mm. know, they're really working hard to prevent transmission, which is why they're quarantining quarantining people that have been in that area that are in contact with those people, so that you're stopping the spread of the disease. Um, so I think it's highly unlikely that would happen. Mm. Um, and also, um, I think it's, it's. I think the main thing also is is that it's an eye opener. How China have have quickly they built a hospital in a matter of days to to help treat and research this virus. It kind of is what what I mean. How would we cope if this happened in Ghana? Would we be the same? Would we have that same response? They'll so it's a real it's a real eye opener. I still be fighting over the land now. <laughs> so it's just it's just yeah it's just one of those things that you know it's an eye opener to, to mm. other countries as you know are we as uh, can we be just as responsive wow. so have they found a vaccine to date then though? no they're still they're still working on it um mm. they're still working on it but but i think at the moment they're treating the symptoms of of, of the disorder mm -hmm. but but as i said i don't want people to be worried that they're at risk i think the main point is that the two key points are that you have to have had contact with somebody that has been in that area or you've been in that area yourself or you know you are a very have a very weakened immune system mm. so um past cancer treatment current cancer treatment hiv very very old with lots mm. of other health issues are very wow. very young and you said that i mean uh, you know the the illness can remain dormant for Two yeah, weeks it's the well, same. Right? It's like similar to a cold. So sometimes you can feel yourself getting run down, and yeah. then all of a sudden you come out in this. It's, it's very similar to that. So okay, right, right. When I, I I thought it was that you know you could kind of just go and you know you could just be going around like nothing's happened. Well, you can, yeah. but that's the same as a cold. You wouldn't yeah. know that you've. So you could, I could cough on you today, mm. and you'd be fine. And then two weeks later, you'd have a cold, or a week later. The, but the that's what we call the incubation period. So the time between when you actually get the infection and then the symptoms come out is about two weeks, they say. So that means I've probably been blaming the wrong people for my cold. This thing. is it. You have to, you have to go back three, five, seven days. Ah, so it's not out. the person like I've been blaming my brother for it. Actually, <laughs> a lot of it time when I get, he ends up being around me, and I'm always blaming him. <laughs> so it's probably not even him. So sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> May not be him. Unlikely to be him. Yeah. Wow. 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 So but we've seen that with this virus now. It's actually. I mean, there's cases around the world now. Yes, but we all we think that they, they have come from that area. Mm. So, um, and if you look at the, the 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 map, it's all in very close vicinity to China, mm -hmm. and the majority of cases are in China. So is this is this is this a new virus to us, or is this something that's just always kind of been good? Really good, interesting question. So mm. the coronavirus is a group of viruses that have always existed, but mm. it's how they mutate and how they change. So yes, this is this is a new type of coronavirus. Like a new strand, almost. Yeah, exactly. Wow, wow. So is this you know you know I mean recently you know um, and even you've said it to me before as well. Obviously. Um, we have this thing about antibiotics now. Mm. Um, don't get use them if they're not, you know, not, yeah. you're not supposed to, etc. So, is this the kind of same thing that we're seeing now, where um, viruses are taking a different form or yes, like that, yes, or? but it probably isn't necessarily to do with 
antibiotics mm. because yeah. there's slightly different infections there's bacteria and there's viruses but yes it's the mm. same principle that they are becoming smarter and changing to to be alive to stay alive so they're there so mm. that's so that's even viruses are fighting for, for life i know so they're wow. becoming smarter in ways that they can evade mm-hmm. n- your immune system to beat to beat it it's not easy out here i man. know i know wow so how can someone now keep themselves i mean again just going over go over the symptoms again so now i'm feeling a bit ran down in myself you know i mean should i if i feel like you know what it's a bit heavier than usual what should i should i go to my gp yeah, should I, think, I go to the a&e I think, I think i think it's always best to get advice as well if you're not sure there's mm. always you can always call the gp you can always call 111 for advice because sometimes if you are at risk so if you've come back from wuhan or had contact with somebody then we probably don't want you to come into an A&E or to a surgery where you're going to expose the virus to other people. So it's always best to get advice because then we can determine your risk of, okay, what's the actual likelihood of of this being that or, or something else. But obviously, if you're feeling really, really unwell, take yourself to A&E, don't, don't wait at home. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think the key things are, you know, if you have had contact with somebody, you should be aware and i'm sure they would have contacted you by now if you've been yeah. in contact yeah. with somebody who's been diagnosed with coronavirus but also just being aware of the some of the symptoms very similar to a cold but mm. if you are you know at risk or one of the at-risk groups you should seek help wow. as soon as you know that brings me to, onto a story um many 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 moons ago when i was studying at university <laughs> um i i was a retail i was working in retail management as a kind of side hustle that's was my side job and um, I'm, I mean, at the time, um, I remember we had this kind of outbreak of SARS and stuff like that. And funny enough, I remember this group of tourists came to the st- came to the store, and I remember this guy going pale and passed. Like, I mean, he was feeling really sick, and we could see like you know, really you know, going very pale and stuff like that. So we took him upstairs, to, you know, to use the t- you know to try and yeah. cool him off and go toilet or something like that. And then he just collapsed. Oh my God, my dear. We called nine nine nine. They were they were even scared. They were like, "Oh my gosh!" So they started testing him and seeing what was going on with him. And he eventually came to himself. And everyone, all, all of a sudden, someone said it was SARS. Oh my gosh! They were like, "Listen, we might have to evacuate the shop." And you know, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, it, it just turned out that I think he was just a bit overwhelmed and um, exhausted gosh. and stuff like that. Oh my! God. Everybody was scared. I thought, "Oh my gosh, that's it for me." Um, but yeah. Uh, Crazy times. It's crazy, crazy times, times man. but you it's crazy know. times because it's almost like I've we've almost seen those kind of uh, that's the word the kind of apocalypse. It is. Um, it is, and I think it's one of those things where you it makes you think, gosh, what if this wasn't contained? Mm. It's all of those Netflix documentaries that are or well, not documentaries, but like programs that yeah. are all of a sudden so very real. Turn into zombies. And yeah, stuff like exactly. That, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, wow, wow, wow. So anybody kind of thinking that, all right, I've come into contact with somebody from there or um, it seems a bit heavier than usual, Mm -hmm. um, they should definitely contact Contact your GP, contact 111. Um, There's also coronavirus, lots of coronavirus Mm. helplines on the internet as well as... um, Yeah. Um, I know we normally touch on these subjects, but I've actually got a different um, angle at this now. Okay. Um, There was a gentleman that says he cured himself with whiskey and honey. Cured himself from? From the coronavirus. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he said that he had it, and um, uh, it was in a paper the other day. Obviously, it wasn't a well-established well paper, um, to say the least, one of these red-top papers. And, um, yeah, he said that his cure was whisk- hot whiskey with honey. No comment. No comment. I, I didn't. At all. I didn't say. I didn't talk about red wine this time. Though. Yeah. No comment so. at all. Was it? Was he actually in Wuhan? Um. D- did I read the full story properly? I think he was around it or something. I think he oh, was okay. one of the first okay. patients to kind of. I. I'm. I'm I. I. I, I, w- I. don't know how that would be, but um, I'd be interested to see the actual article. But what I do know is that yeah. I'm. I'm not sure. I think I wouldn't rely strictly. I should have sent it to you. Yeah. I should have sent it to you actually. Yeah. yeah but yeah, we, we're not, we're, well, we're not, you're not, you're not sold on that. So no, no. So to cure the common cold, you don't think honey, honey, lemon, and brandy is that? Well, I think go? the thing with the thing with colds and 
common colds is that they go away by themselves. You mm-hmm. know, they, they, they go away in their own time, you know, normally seven to 10 days, sometimes 14 days. And things like honey, lemon, paracetamol water, they're all things to make you feel better whilst you're getting rid of the mm-hmm. virus. So it doesn't necessarily make the virus go away any quicker, but you feel better. Mm. Hope everybody heard that for the doctor and <laughs> myself, you know. Wow, wow. Okay. So, I mean, with viruses, I mean, what's happening in the world of health now to kind of, I know you said that China, they're building these. I mean, I'm sure viruses are mutating. Yeah, and that's all, it. It's just trying time. to, I think the main thing is trying to predict which viruses are going to change and be able to predict how to treat them. So when you can work that out, then you can you can say you can already have a cure or a vaccine for said mutated virus so i think that's what people work so hard and tirelessly for but sometimes there's one that'll just come up that no one was really expecting and that's that's what's happened and that's the thing about science is that it can be very unpredictable so should we i don't know are we likely to see in our lifetime something like this happening again i mean um you know, in some, some kind of... I, unfortunately, I think so. Just simply from the fact that we've had, even in my lifetime, I can think of quite large epidemics. You mentioned SARS. Mm. You know, we've had Ebola. We've had... Um, yeah, yeah. There was yeah. something else in between. And oh, there was this, uh, you know, thing about with the babies and stuff as well, wasn't there? Yes. Um, uh, Zika virus. Yeah. So, really, uh, given that we've had kind of major outbreaks in this, in our lifetime... Or even not even our lifetime. I'm sure there'll be more. Scary times, scary times. I'm definitely um, hot honey or hot yeah. And I think I w- and also just take advantage yeah. of all the the advice that's there. Wash your hands. Stay healthy. Eat well. Mm. And and you know, uh, you you will stay well. But yeah. don't don't be scared or worried or frightened. Yeah. As well. So moving on to that, especially at this time of year, as it's getting, it's that cold time now. Yeah. Um, especially February. February can be a dangerous month, you know. Um, so anybody who hasn't, you know, done flu jabs and stuff like that already, what would your advice be? To yeah, I think, time? I think again, if you're high, in a high risk group, so if you're um, diabetic or you are on some immune suppressing drugs, if you're on some arthritis treatments, for example, um, if you're asthmatic, definitely go and get your flu jab. Um, it's not too late. Some of the pharmacists still have them in stock. Um, you can also get them done privately as well. Mm. Please, so do that. Please, we, need, we need everybody please, in please, one piece. Yeah. We need everybody in one piece. So yeah. Especially the, the groups um, that you've mentioned already. And in terms of kind of preventing, so kind of going into the prevention of, of just the genuine cold already, you know, would you recommend that everyone goes to get themselves some kind of facial mask or? I, I don't think it's nece- necessary mm. to have a face mask for a common cold. I think you need some exposure to build up your immune system. Every time mm. you get a cold, you leave a like a, you know, it leaves a little stamp so your body can recognize it the next time and beat it off. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's necessary to have a face mask, but I think um, stay warm, wrap up properly. Um, and wash your hands as well. Mm-hmm. And when you're coughing and sneezing, cough and sneeze into a tissue. Mm-hmm. Not just into Catch the, it, not into it, the sky it. everywhere. You I sort know. of train. And cough <laughs> your mouth and then wash your hands. Oh, I hate. You know that's one thing I cannot stand. And the people that just cough <laughs> with their mouth. I know open. it's. Oh, it's. I, I. I don't like it at yeah, all. I think anything. You know. To be honest, I hate it when inconsiderate people just do. You know, inconsiderate things. Yeah, this yeah. Inc- I, I can't stand it. We see when people I, just but, uh, and I also yeah, uh, I also I, just feel like as a doctor, it's my job almost to say, look, do you mind just yeah. covering your mouth? So do you actually say that to people? Though? Sometimes, because also <laughs> what on a train or something? No, 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 no. At work, uh, some people. No, 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 no. Not, not straight. Not. I'm, I don't think I'm brave enough to do that to, um, to yeah. people on the on the train. But at work, if someone is you know, well, so as you're walking through, I'm just no, trying to no, picture just it. sat in my in my office, and then they cough. They're talking and they cough in my on me. Mm. I'm, you know, I'm gonna say, do you mind just covering your mouth when you cough? Because also, I don't really want to be. I don't want to be sick. And I'm also, and also, it's good. I'm helping you with your prevention. 
I'm giving you advice. So I, I do, I do say. You don't mean your words, do you, Doc? No, but but most most of them say, oh, I'm really sorry. You know what, our doctor, she's so polite, honestly. I could, <laughs> I could just see you just saying, would you, 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 yeah, covering your mouth. Oh, wow. Yeah, but most people are quite respectful and they'll cover their mouth when they cough. Mm. Yeah. Wow, wow. But tell us about World Cancer Day, Doc. Yes, so it is and World Cancer Day. Did you not know? No, funny enough, you know what, I've been meaning to check in with Macmillan, I've been kind of hiding for a little while. It's had a little bit on, so yeah. yeah. But I know as soon as I call, I know when uh, honestly, there's a lady called um, Benny in Croydon. She is a star. Yeah, truly, really. the work that she does is unbelievable. I'd love to bring her here one day to kind of just talk you about should. the good work she's doing. But um, she's got a way, even if I'm busy, of getting me to come and do something, it, and it's good. I'm I'm always happy to do it. But I knew I just didn't have the time. So I've been a kind of ducking and diving and <laughs> you know she's about four foot tall as well but <laughs> honestly it's the work that to think she'll be like oh Stanley I need this can you do that and I can't say no so um sorry Benny I haven't seen you for a minute um but I'm, I'm still here I'm always in the shadows um I figured this is to get my myself to the office isn't it so anyway tell us about yeah World so Cancer World Cancer Day is um a day where we look at cancer and ways that we can prevent it and also looking at people that have survived cancer mm. and looking at why that is and kind of celebrating um that cancer is not necessarily a, <coughs> a death sentence mm. um by all means and also trying to encourage people to be aware that there are ways to prevent some cancers mm -hmm. um i'm seeing more and more people at work that will come in and say can i have a blood test for for just all the cancers and it doesn't it doesn't exist mm. you know but people are really s scared understandably i guess but people it's something that really 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 worries people that's often the thing that people worry about when they come in and see you for a, a pain or a lump or a bump or a symptom please tell me it's not cancer so mm. there's something yeah. that is in the back of a lot of people's minds so um, there are sort of things that we, we can all do to prevent our chances of our risk of cancer. Not for all cancers, but for some. And I think mm -hmm. the first thing I will say is that take the opportunity. We In this country, we're so incredibly lucky that we have screening programs for certain cancers. So cervical cancer, you know, all women over the age of 25 are invited to come and have a, a free cervical screen where mm -hmm. we can look um, to test for changes that could prevent you getting cervical cancer. We also have a breast screening program in this country. We also have um, a bowel screening um, mm -hmm. program as well. So we're so fortunate that we have screening programs that are, uh, that are, that are there, but many people don't really understand what it's for or they just can't be bothered, but it's such a... It's, it's a good way. So when people say, can I have a blood test for cancer? I say, well, why have you done your screening? You know, it's, it's easy to organize, it's easy to do. Take mm -hmm. that opportunity because in other countries, there is no screening program. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You pay a lot of money Yeah. Um, to get it. And even the access, to, you know, I keep saying like, um, look, if it wasn't for the NHS and a bit of private healthcare as well, yeah. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be here. Um, and you know, I think I'm testament um, mm. to the fact that you know you can survive and, and get over cancer. Um, and again, I will say to you that this having it honestly, look, I think I was, I I believe because I was in Ghana just before I was diagnosed, right? Probably like a two, probably like two weeks before. And I will say to you, I I, I was sick in Ghana. I was I I I had cancer when I was in Ghana. I believe. Um, probably, I think at the, by the time I was diagnosed, it was at, you know, <laughs> it was at alarm state, alarm mm. bells were ringing, but I believe I was, I, mm. you know, I mean, it was happening already. Um, and they, I know I would, I mean, I didn't go to the hospital in Ghana for, you know, to be checked, but it wasn't something that, um, I think it didn't really present, certain signs weren't presented to me at the time anyway, but, um, I would think it would. I think it probably would have gone misdiagnosed. 
um, because I didn't really have diagnosis as such. It just gave me some tablets and a drip. Um, and I know not all, all hospitals are like this, and I know there's some amazing doctors in Ghana, mm. but you have to pay for the access. That's the reality. You know, a friend of ours was, wasn't too well in Ghana, and, you know, there are good doctors and great mm -hmm. um, health facilities mm -hmm. in Ghana, but you pay for them. I mean, you can get a free checkup from your GP. Um, and yeah. obviously all of these services that you've just said, um, other than being have a blood test for everything, you might get a blood test for something, but they're all free. They're all free. Um, the treatment, the drugs, and look, I, I met some amazing people from America when I was in Ghana, and um, you need to have your private health care in place, man. If you don't have your health care in place, it's only the Lord that can save you. And um, that's that's also really honestly. sad. Yeah. Because honestly. there's so many people that just can't can't afford it. Yeah. I, would, I, was, I was told about a case where the guy had health care, but it wasn't like the right level, you know. So, you know, the money that they, he pays for that, just drugs that we get here for free, almost. You know, oh, I need to get a few in it, this and that, and that. The kind of, the, if you hear the cost, obviously, you know, we deal with some pharmaceuticals, mm. so I know what mm. the actual cost of some of these drugs are. And um, these drugs are, I mean, are relative, I would relatively inexpensive, but the prices they're adding on. It's so expensive. So, I mean, I mean, UK's got a lot of problems <laughs> at the moment, but one thing that we do have is good healthcare. Definitely, and, um, definitely. Um, Honestly, yeah, so um, yeah. So I just take 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 those opportunities to have your screening, um, and if you're not sure about something, you're not sure what the test is for. Mm. Speak speak to your GP about it because they will help you understand what the test is for and what the test entails. Mm -hmm. um, and and sometimes you know people worry about missing work and things like that. Some of these tests we can arrange for you to have on a weekend, so it's it's all possible as well. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. There's a few tips that I have, or ways that you can reduce your own cancer risk. And that there's one that, that there's a few that I wanted to mention. So the, the main thing is um, we do know that smoking is associated with, with many different types of cancer. We know that it can change normal cells to abnormal cells mm -hmm. the more you smoke. So trying to cut down or stopping altogether is, is is a really really good idea there's lots of other options um if you are trying to stop so nicotine replacement patches there's medication that we can use these are all much better options and they will this will definitely help reduce your risk of having cancer mm -hmm. yeah. and, and making sure that you're an ideal body weight as well so again being overweight increases your risk for certain cancers like bowel cancer um as well and and that is worth doing. It's New Year, a lot of people are really trying to shed some weight. Um, just think about it as reducing your risk overall. Wow. Wow. Got, actually, Doc, I've got a bit of news for you. Tell me. I went for a checkup the other day. You know, I go for my yearly checkups for um, the leukemia. Yes. And uh, it's been like four and a half years now and um yeah got it all clear again oh good you were scaring me there for a second oh no no never the suspense scared. i was like yeah really <laughs> good but um because of the type of cancer i had then the doctors are very confident now it's like he's safe he said look i can i'm safe to say that i don't think it will reoccur so like the reoccurrence is like oh, under one percent because nice. of what i was treated so that's Thank really you. good news. Really good. That's so really good news. But you are somewhat of a puzzle. I'm sure that, you know, because of your types, you know, of cancer. Mm. So that is un extremely unusual. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm, sure I'm that over the first one. Now, the first one is like I've been signed off there, so I don't deal with them anymore. Um, it's crazy because obviously I go to the same hospital and go to two different <laughs> places. Yeah. Um, and it's like you would say, okay, put everything together, but it's like, no, nope, they're separate. So, um, yeah, I can only say that, um, again, the reason why I, I decided to um, help out with Macmillan was, um, you know, you just have to kind of believe and get there. And it's not an easy um, thing. You know, I lost my mum and dad to it. And um, even a guy who's near and dear to me, I just want to just kind of say a, a big up to him. He's an amazing guy called Raymond Borg. Um, I met him when um, I was on a ward and 
Um, he actually took the time. It was a very scary time, but he did. He, you know, he took the time out to, to speak to me. I remember I needed an asthma pump. He gave me one, and um, there's a lot going on in your mind at that time, and mm. just to kind of have a lot of people around you. But unfortunately, um, I mean, I, I suppose he lost his. I suppose he lost the battle to it. Oh. Um, but again, I think it's good that we can kind of highlight, you know, through days like this, and and remember, you know, great this people. Is, yeah. Yeah. Um, through times like this and even through um, you know the rough and tough times you know finding that energy just to help and encourage people at the mm. same time so mm. um, yeah I mean as you said I, f I think it's amazing that you know we have all of these at our fingertips um, in terms of being able to test and find out and I mean it's good to know that the f survival rates are, are a lot higher yeah. now yeah um, they are and, and we're picking up cancers much earlier mm. which means that the tr you know the the overall treatment is working better and yeah so yeah. so it's 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 good but we just have to keep talking about it and i think also Definitely. within the black and ethnic minority black and ethnic minority groups cancer is still somewhat of a taboo Definitely, area. definitely. Because again, I think I, I speak to you know Black and Asian men about it, and it's very much, you know, culturally. I remember mentioning it to my uncle, and it's like, don't tell anybody, don't mention yes, anything, and yes, don't do this. Yes. And it's like, you know, it's like you know, you're almost made to feel dirty about the subject, and it's something that you shouldn't have, and it's all of this stuff, and it's that we don't discuss it, and um, you know, God bless her. So I, I know a lady who you know also lost a battle to it, and it was something that she didn't talk about. You know, nobody even knew till it was like almost too late, mm -hmm. and mm. Um, you know, people were just consulting with the wrong people. Um, you know, misadvice from here, and again, I will say to you that even from my own the only little, little experience I had, um, there's a lot of people that guided me along the way as well, mm -hmm. and these are things that we can talk about. And again, I I got again a lot of my encouragement to do this through. Um, it was my friend's dad that was going through something, and um, she's like, "Oh, yeah. you know, he wants to do that." And I'm like, "Listen, don't give him the chance. Um, the doctor will give you the will give you the advice, but they can't force you." I said, "You have that power to say and mm -hmm. do something." Um, so yeah, I think it. You know, I mean, I think um, we're in an interesting time. Yeah. Um, with all of the developments around this and what can happen, and it's 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 not a death sentence. It's not, and I think it's it's education, isn't it? Mm. If, if Pe people don't realise that, first of all, that you can survive cancer and have a very normal, healthy life. And also that some people don't know that black people can get cancer. So mm. pe some people genuinely don't know that black people can get breast cancer, for example, because of, and, and they think it's because of the, how the media were portraying breast cancer and they're talking about it. It was always, it was always white women, white women, mm -hmm. white women. So then when, a black woman got breast cancer, she felt incredibly isolated mm -hmm. and she felt like she was alone because in all the leaflets and all the pictures that she's seeing, it's always of a of a, of a white yeah. woman. But we do also know that breast cancer is, is, is more aggressive in black yeah. women. So it's trying to keep having these discussions and making sure that we encourage um, yeah. people of black and ethnic minority but to, to tell their story and, mm -hmm. to, and to say what they're saying because it's probably going to help somebody else yeah and you know what i found as well talking to a lot of people because i mean just like you doctor i learned a lot from you but i i, I like to ask questions at the same time I, i'll go a bit deeper and a lot of the time we hear oh family member mum, dad <laughs> auntie uncle is sick back home and you know not only when you hear they're sick they, they're dying at that stage um or, you know, they're sick. But uh, the question is, what are they sick with? Yes. And oh, you'll be surprised how yeah, many times yeah. I've asked and asked and asked and now, oh, they've got cancer. And we don't talk, we don't say it. It's almost don't that, again, it. we just don't talk about it. Don't talk about and it. And it's, That yeah. can be somebody's encouragement. You know, maybe there's something out there that can help them. Mm -hmm. um, again, as I said, it's not a death sentence. Found early enough, seen the symptoms early enough. Mm. A lot can be done. Yeah, and I also think it's, you know, there's definitely... People sometimes, you know, can rely very heavily on the church, but I also think that the church also has a duty of care um, to That's their another subject, to know. their to their um, to their. Yeah. What's called the I will say from my experience, I I believe my faith helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I would say that 
you know, with everything comes wisdom. Yes. So again, my thing is, uh, depending on no matter what faith you are, no matter how hard you pray, there's no door that's just going to open by itself. You have to at least go and mm-hmm. do the door. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, just I mean, I've told you the story about my cousin where he has to go and seek alternative ne- medicine and stuff like that. And I said, look, I, I only liken it to, you know, trying to push a, a quite a heavy car, even not even a small car. You need momentum. You need mm. momentum to kind of get going, and that momentum is your medication. That's your yeah. radiotherapy or yeah. whatever they're going to give you. Um, your faith can definitely help you mentally and and, and kind of help and you gives through. You, gives you some strength I'm, I'm, and I'm, guidance. I'm, I'm, I'm and sure support. there's no yeah. um, at least I can say this, but I'm sure there's no um, uh, prayer will help you to a degree, but you yes. must yes. help yourself. And, and yeah. I've seen it that, and uh, again, I'm not taking anything away from anybody's faith or any past or any religious group at all but i've seen it that people just rely on 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 prayer alone to get through something Mm. um and from my point of view i mean i'm speaking as a man here please don't shoot me down um sometimes it's it's that sometimes that's just not enough i mean if you've got a headache you can pray you can pray you can pray but then sometimes you need to take a paracetamol yeah i'm not sure if you've seen there was a video that was floating around i'm not sure if you've seen it um, I can't. I don't know where it was, but please, uh, please don't, don't even. I hope it's not the guy I'm thinking of in my it head is. already. Oh gosh, please. It please. is where he. Uh, let me tell. I'll turn your microphone down, Doc. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You've seen it, haven't you? Oh, listen. It's not even just one video. It's a series. It's like it's oh, like a it? comedy show. Oh, well, I've only seen this clip, and then there, <sighs> it's it's very tragic. It's so tragic. I think I hope we talk about the same video, but it's extremely tragic and it's sad that he has lost his his life. Um, oh, there's a f- oh, you think? Well, I'm, I was talking about this pastor from Ghana that just makes any kind of claim. Oh no, no, no! Know, I'm talking bias. about the one where so there's uh, there's a pastor. He's preaching, you know, the sermon, and he he falls back, and he falls back in his chair, and he's having he's he must be having a heart attack and instead of anybody you know going up to him to resuscitate him they pray over him and he dies they you know they lay hands on him they're praying they're praying the congregation are hysterical but he dies so it's yeah and it's it's so tragic you know as a doctor I know that you know you have you know some ethics with this but you know I'll say that look man I can at least I there's some things that I can say. Look, it doesn't matter what faith you good. I mean, it's great if you believe in 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 somebody and something. It's amazing, but you have to use your brain when it comes to certain things. I'm not saying that prayer can't help people, but you have to be able to do something. Yeah. yeah can you yeah. pray over somebody and and something happen? I'm sure you can. But if someone can't breathe, use your wisdom. My, my thing this is, I, I believe that you, gave yeah. us wisdom. Yeah. And you have to be able to. I mean, it God, you know, I mean, if if a, a marble is stuck in a child's throat, you can just pray, pray, just pump the child and use your. Br- Look, man, we're going far with this thing. I know, ah, I ah. know. Don't I let know. me. Don't let. If I start today, this show won't finish for the yeah, rest of the week. So it's yeah, it's it's just trying to use. Look, people. I've seen I've seen people stop knowledge. taking their medication. I know. Fully stop taking. Like this guy said, this is going to happen to me. Yes, and to stop and. But and it, it's it's I can see the confliction for people, you know. But but you've got to you've got to you've got to try and do what you think is best, and 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 listen listen to your inner self. Don't be guided by anybody. So somebody says that he like the guy come and he puts up put yeah he's putting his hand here like this and then, please yo please please we're going far with all of this thing. So but we, yes. we all built, my thing is we all built a bit differently. We all have our you know, our strengths and our weaknesses. Everybody's a bit different. I wear glasses and stuff like I mean somebody come and make my eyes see good good <laughs> again. I don't wear these things. Then maybe my my mind will change. But until then, we've all got we've all got a little something. Yeah. Yeah. And we can all and I will say to me, like I said, I think what helped me through my illness was um, my mental ability. It was, the, you know, I, I told you before, I saw I was I saw a counsellor, things were very hard for me, but I really had to tune my brain to being positive. And, and through my faith with friends, family, good doctors, everybody, all of that, plus medication, 
plus some even herbs. Even my uncle brought some herbs at one point. All of that mixed into one helps. But just to say that you're gonna go and consult this, some oh, no. you know, and no no disrespect to anybody out there, no, please. Yeah, I'm not disrespecting. I think, I think people understand that we're it's it's all about a balance mm. and it's all about trying to use that wisdom and knowledge and not be blind to very legitimate ways of helping yourself. Mm -hmm. That's it, really. And then that's it. You see, that's it. That's it. Really. She, she, she says it so well, <laughs> so well. So um, that's it. Yeah. all right. So just to recap, then, so at least, is, I just want to salute everybody who's either you know been through cancer, knowing someone who's gone through it, lost someone who's going through it, um, or someone's just dealing with it. It's, it's not easy on on any front. Um, but yeah, I mean the fact that we can keep going and, and remember, and again, there's so much out there that can just help somebody today. Again, just if you're there thinking is, about this, there trying, is, just, there is, and I think you know. don't be scared because often people don't come to the GP because they're scared that it, that it, you know, it could be something they'd rather not know. But like I, like like we've both said, there's so many treatments and things like that. It doesn't mean that you're, it's a death sentence. You could actually live a very long and fulfilled life. So don't mm. be hesitant. Come and see the GP and get it checked. Yeah, excellent. And uh, coronavirus? Anybody coronavirus. suspecting anything? Wash your hands. Cough into a tissue. What about the, what, the, the, like the alcohol thing as well? Um, it's best to use your hands with, uh, wash your hands with hot, hot water and soap. Um, Dettol does not kill coronavirus either because there was something going around saying that that's you see what if you don't there's a look you can't probably can't see it on the dot there's a confused look that doctor will have yeah because i just realized that someone sent that to me <laughs> and, I, and i remember thinking oh. yeah i remember she burst my bubble about rub and all of that stuff yeah you yeah. know um so doctor she has a thing where uh, uh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's it really yeah. um yeah and just stay healthy stay well mm -hmm. um and, and I'm back to the gym, doc. You know, I've lost oh, last you? week. I lost three kilos. Back Don't to my intermittent know. fasting. This year, I have to. I have to get easy, one of right? the. I need to get those six packs that those guys have. You know, and mm. those muscles and stuff like that. And no, I need know. to. I need, we, I need to. Everyone needs to. We all need yeah, to. Yeah, so really, really on it this year. So. We're not getting any younger. Trust me. And I'm trying to reduce my risk of cancer, so I need to. Trust be me. Healthy. So yeah, I learned, I learned a lot going to Ghana. Um, yeah, so this time around, uh, yeah, I'm going to try hard. Just bit by bit. I think I overdid yeah. it last year. Yeah, gradually. So, this so gradually. Sure. So. Wow. But no, great to be back. Great to be back. And we will be back. When are we back? We will be back next week for more fun and games. Mm -hmm. So join us from the hours of 9 to 10. Yes. For the medical show, myself, Stan J. And, and myself, Dr. Damso. On GN Radio, the link to Africa. Um, so yeah, you know what? Again, um, you can also find out more information about Doctor on her Instagram, which is at the Clinic Diaries, YouTube, also. Twitter, Facebook, everywhere, everywhere at the Clinic Diaries. She's also. always got great, great, great stuff coming up. Yeah. So make sure you check <laughs> it out. If you've got any questions, you can also drop her an email. You can drop her a DM. Or any sensible stuff, please. Yes. You know, right. I know there was a guy that was stalking her for a little while. A little while, but he's <laughs> he's, he's gone. So he's gone back okay. into his show now. So, yeah. All right. Until next week, Doc. Good night. And good night to you, too.